What's going on guys? Welcome back to another War Thunder video. Today we're taking a look at the M18 90mm Hellcat, otherwise known as the Super Hellcat. This is a premium tier 4 tank destroyer in the American tank tech tree. Comes with a battle rating of 6.3. Because it's premium it costs 7,480 Golden Eagles. Same as the German RU-251. I would actually prefer this over the RU-251 as it has APHE shells which are fantastic in the flank and that's how you use this vehicle you use its speed you abuse the speed actually it's it's fantastic the top speed on this is 72 kilometers an hour you you will very rarely actually reach that speed but the the acceleration that you see with the help the super hellcat is tremendous this has the the hull of the m18 hellcat but the turret of the m36 you got uh, an M18 maneuverability, but with a 90 millimeter American cannon. It's 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 tremendous. The APHE shell or APCVC is also referred to as. It's tremendous. It's got good penetration, but because it's it's not it's not great, so you have to use its speed and you have to flank your, your enemies. Look behind me, and I see this this Tiger in front of me. This is the Porsche. Tiger this is the premium version. I just wait for him to drive up in front of me, and I'll just shoot him right here in the side. This is. A perfect ambush situation. On my Tunisia, this is the most common map that I've gotten with this tank. Um, I probably get it 60% 60, 60 of my matches are on Tunisia for some reason over the span of about four months. It's, it's crazy how, how often I get this map and it's it's one of the best maps for this vehicle is you're able to use this intermediate area between B and, and C and flank, uh, flank your opponents and there's a Tiger 2P off to my right, headed to B. So I'll go and intercept him. But of course I check my left just to make sure that it's all clear. He turns his turret just a little bit. Put a shot right in the side of his turret. And you see the APHG shell, it just evaporates the crew and ammo. Of course the King Tigers also have uh, fuel tanks which are prone to combustion. C is now under attack, I gotta go and help them out. Come down here to see what's what's what, and you can see the, the, the maneuverability on this is excellent. I was able to get off from between those rocks and get down here quickly, but the armor is very poor on the on the uh, on the Super Hellcat. The Panther shoot him right in the side of the turret. He came out one shot again. <laughs> You'll notice a theme: the the 90 millimeter is my my favorite. Well, it's my third favorite cannon in the game. It's excellent. Got good penetration. Lots of high explosive filler. And just like that, we got three kills and a cap. And those cap points, they add up. Not only for uh, re returning in, in, uh, in another vehicle, but also the Silver Lions and RP. And if you have a premium account and you cap a, a capture point all by yourself, you're looking at over 10,000 Silver Lions. And roughly 1,000 in, in research points. So, so the, the rewards are excellent with this vehicle. My gosh, that's her poor little guy. <laughs> the binoculars work really well too. They have a good zoom, and so does the scope. I'm I'm really happy with this with the zoom on this vehicle. Uh, I see a panther here in this opening, but I can't get a great visual because of this this uh, bush. Pull out in front of him. Pull out in front of the bush and went right through the side of the panther. Like no problem whatsoever with this 90 millimeter. It's it's excellent for anything uh, under a, a Tiger II. A Tiger II is a little bit more difficult, as you'll see here in a little bit. This next clip is from yesterday. I once again found myself on Tunisia. Again, these these games I've been showing are from anywhere from October to uh, February, so um, I'm, I'm covering several months here of footage, and once again, Tunisia is the most popular map. Instead of going to the left like I normally do, I instead head to the right in, in this in, in this gap in between these these uh, large boulders, in the in the hopes of getting someone coming across. When I hear of a vehicle behind me, it's an RE251. You'll see he is just as fast as I was to get to this spot, and I was able to to hear him just a little bit sooner than he was able to recognize the the fact that there was someone next to him. <laughs> so he's out of the match. Now I gotta. You, I have to now flank in, in between this, this middle point here and see if there's anything coming. I didn't want to see a Tiger here just yet, but there is one to my left. He's he's entering this battle just a little bit later than the RU. After all, he is 
much slower than the RU. Try to pop him in the side of his hull, but he's angled well, way too well. So I'm going to have to pull back and wait for him to make the, the, the next move. I can't push him very well. I don't have the, the armor to deal with the, with the Tiger II. So he's going to come from one of two ways. Either he's going to flank my direct my my, my initial position and come to where my uh, where my front of the tank is, or he's going to come in this same area that I was initially at, that being in between these rocks. I'm just waiting to to listen for his engine, and he's coming from behind me, exactly where I used to be. So I just wait for him to come around this corner. There you are, big boy, right into the crew compartment. And look at that H APHE, man. It's just, it's devastating. Absolutely devastating to a tank. And that's why I would, I would buy, if, you know, if I were to start a War Thunder account from scratch, if you had, if you had given me the, the option between buying this tank for the American tech tree or the German RU t uh, tank for, for that tech tree, I would opt for this because in a flanking roll, the 90 millimeter gun on the American tank, while it doesn't have the penetration of the he had a fest shell on the RU251 in a flank position. Yeah, this thing is so damn good. It kills everything it comes across. If even if you can't pen frontally the tank, you can always uh, shoot at the uh, at the at the gun barrel and take that out. With an RU251, because of the the way that the 90 millimeter heat FS works, it's it's rather inefficient at killing more than one or two crew members at a time. I do recommend bringing APCR with the with the uh, Super Hellcat as the regular APHE shell does not have excellent penetration value for dealing with it. Say something like a King Tiger or a Yag Tiger. That's why you absolutely have to flank those if you if at all possible, and use the APCR as a last resort. You may have seen that I marked up the map. That's where I saw a T44, and I let my teammates go after him instead. I have a, a pretty good uh, force of, of allies at Charlie, so if if if, if at all possible, they're going to encounter him for long before I will anyway. And so I just let them deal with him, and you can see he's getting marked right now, so they're, they've they already encountered him. And here in just a second, there's going to be a shot that rings out from up above this little plateau. I'm going to mark that on the map, and I'm going to go in pursuit of, of whatever is up there. At the time, of course, I didn't know what was up here, but I would later realize that there was an IS-3 up here. So, I'm in a 6.3 tank going up against a 7.3 tank, so this is quite an up tier. But it's definitely workable with the with the uh, APHE shell that you get with the Super Hellcat, as long as you flank it. But the IS-3 isn't alone, there's a, there's a French AMX-50 over here that's going to pop out from the right here, just behind this rock. Thankfully, he doesn't see me. Uh, I just get the top of his tank turret. Once again, APG rips apart the last few crew members that he's got. I hear a tank engine up here. I, I, I wasn't sure if it was the the enemy tank or my friendly, so I, I just go ahead and push up over this hill to see what it is. After all, there's a, a little bit of a rock here to protect me. And that's when I realized it's the IS-3. It's a very dangerous tank, but with the... If you super health get in a flank position, it just doesn't hit stand a chance. That would be my last kill on that battle. We would just continue to mop up the last remaining people that were in the spawn. So that begs the question, what is the weakness of this vehicle? That's the armor, quite simply. The turret is 76 millimeters of frontal armor. The hull has 12.7 millimeters of armor. And of course, you've got the open top, which is vulnerable to air aircraft. Nice try, mister. <laughs> and this is this is where we find the the weakness. There's a ta up above just raining down hell on me. I'm down to two crew members, my gun breach is out. My transmission is yellow, so it's not running efficiently. Got almost a 30 second repair. And again, this is one of the weaknesses of this vehicle. It's just like the M18, just like the M36. I wish War Thunder would have some sort of an add-on armor piece, a roof, actually, you know, just, just, even, if, even if it's just a thin piece of roof that you could put on, similar to what we've had with the Sherman Firefly, for example, where 
can add on additional plates of armor on the front. Well, instead, put a roof on, on this thing. That would really help uh, add to the survivability of the Super Hellcat, as well as the M18, the M36. And of course, it would give, all, give us all something else to grind on those vehicles. Of course, with the Super Hellcat, that would be a free modification. It's, it's a premium. We got five seconds to go. Come on, let's go. Come on. And we're off. And we're not. <laughs> 47 more seconds. Let's go, boys. <laughs> oh. Sometimes, sometimes this, this tank is a pain in the ass to play. And I think this match uh, pretty pretty well illustrates that, that, that frustration that you feel every once in a while. Is there's, there's really nothing you can do. I mean, my engine, excuse me, my transmission is out, and now everything is out. Everyone's dead. <laughs> Good job. Now, before I wrap up today's video, I want to say that this battle rating is excellent for this vehicle. For aircraft support, you've got the, the P-51H, as well as a number of P-47s and P-51s. Uh, you, you have an excellent array of, of, of fighters at your disposal for either ground attack or for air superiority. You can very easily get your revenge against enemy aircraft, or you can bomb tanks left and right. Now, as far as ground vehicles at this BR, you of course have the 6.3 battle rating M26 Pershing. We've also got the M36 Tank Destroyer. You've got the Jumbo Sherman with the 76mm gun at 5.7. Then at 6.0, you've also got the Walker Bulldog. Very similar to the Super Hellcat, the Walker Bulldog has excellent maneuverability, but it doesn't have the APD, APHE shells. So depending on your state of upgrades, you could have either APCR or even APDS shells at your disposal, both of which are are fairly good. APDS is definitely better. What I usually do is I take out either the Pershing or the Super Hellcat as my first tank. It just depends on the map that I get. Most maps I prefer the Super Hellcat, but there are some where the M26 is additional armor proves to be a, a really big help to your survivability. Super Hellcat, it, 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 its armor is really is really pathetic, quite frankly. So you don't expect to live that long. You're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, and so you just don't have that armor to to back you up with the Super Hellcat. Just know that if you take out those heavies in the flank early on, you can make a big impact on the game. I'm sitting at over a 70% win rate with my Super Hellcat. It's all because of the fact that you're taking out heavies at the very beginning of the game before they're able to accumulate additional spawn points from kills and capture points. And so I found the Super Hellcat to be a, a really impact player for the Americans at battle rating 6.3. Anyway guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, click that thumbs up button. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Take care, guys.